And well, we don't have to wait long. We are thick and into the action. Pistol round already underway. And MBK, he's found first blood. OG on that CT side, and they are slaughtering Swedes out in this yard. Bomb plants found for NIP, but nothing further. Not even a single kill to their name. Twist needs to change that game, but he's only done damage, a dink, and a kill onto the king himself. But any more from the back of Ebox? They're hunting him down. They're pushing him from all sides. And Alexa B will let nothing uh, go the way of NIP in this round. It's OG finding a pistol defuse and starting things off strong. That's a, a scary start for NIP. Certainly already been down a map, but we're early days, Harry. And if Inferno taught us anything, it's uh, to not count your chickens before they hatch because, well, that went the full 30 and then some. Yeah, plus, you know, at that point, they're just eggs, mate. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's always something to consider, isn't it? OG, they get themselves the pistol round locked on in. And that there is a nice little start for the squad coming off of a victory on their map pick. Now, I do think that for NIP to, uh, to be taken seriously here at Cologne, I want them to be winning their own map pick, and I want them to be showing some dominance here. We've got a bit of a, uh, a buy swap sell going on back in T-spawn, right? Like Nork, he's bartering with them. He's secured himself a CZ. So it's all okay with this force buy for NIP. It's the two AKs on Hampus and Plopski that you're gonna wanna keep an eye on here. This is such a great map for NIP, not just here, but your current Dignitas, the old boys uh, as well. So never really changing. And yeah, I mean, the orbs, I, I want to see if Twist brings it out here in this map, right? We had Hampus and Nork, obviously, I think that was based off of position more than anything, but, you know, this is a map where I feel like we're going to have Twist back on that AWP at some point. Hampus opening kills, and he's going to join Propsky to find a five on three. This force by for NIP has caught OG with their pants down, and Valdi, he's stuck on the Ivy position. Propsky's going to go wide, an excellent shot. The flashbang won't stop him, and right now, OG, they've got nothing. This is a clean round for NIP and the last man left on inner as we look to find a instant response from the Swedes. Alex to be, you know, like famed for his uh, SMG usage, but this is maybe asking a little <laughs> bit much of him, right? Gonna be NIP, as you say, like it just felt like OG weren't really ready for the force to come on in. And with that first kill just instantly going down, it threw everything into disarray. And like suddenly, you know, that you can imagine there would just be chaos. Like who's watching where? How do we plug that hole? And then every single time you try and fix the problem, it's only getting worse. And uh, suddenly everything, everything that you've tried to set up for just goes right out the window. And so NIP overwhelm OG there. Uh, it's gonna be these force by wars to kickstart train. And after how Inferno went, I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, we've had our overtimes, we've had our close games, we've had our aces. And now we get to have these force by wars to have a very, very tense beginning to this second map. Yeah, I really like that as well, right? Because we never actually saw any successful ecos or low economy rounds back in that previous map. I, I, I'm trying to remember, but I don't think we had a single eco win, which is honestly a rarity in CS when we see like, you know, at times second round forces have like a 45% win rate you know, in the past. So yeah, that's uh, it's always welcome. Let's see what OG can do with the Deagles out in round number three. NIP obviously, you know, after getting the bomb part of the second round win, they are so well armed. They are stacked up with three M4s off the back of OG's previous buy. So yeah, their investment's coming back to haunt them as Nork finds the opening kill. Alexa B trying to cross pop and that's the SMG gone. Picked up by Issa instead. OG gonna try and close the distance here with these Deagles, get up close to A main. And IP still looking to split this A site, and they are playing patient as well. Issa runs into the sight line of Propsky. MBK is trapped at all off, and only one kill off of the Deagle here from Valdi. Mantu helps out, but his position known, trapped in the sandwich, and they'll make a meal out of that. It's going to be two to one for NIP. Now the eco coming in from OG, and normality, normality is restored. Yeah, but rest assured, it's only briefly. We don't want to keep things too normal around here. We quite like the madness. NIP, they should be on a fast track to get 3-1 up here on train. And I say should be. That's a pretty safe assumption, right? I'm really playing it safe there. I didn't even commit to saying that this should be a one round. But obviously, you know, the moment you do, everyone reminds you that USPs do still win rounds sometimes. And they do, but, like, it shouldn't be happening. And, uh... It won't. I imagine it won't, but I'd love to be proved wrong, especially because Hugo really did go in confidently yeah. there with the, nah, it's not happening. So come on, OG. 
Let's do it. Bit of damage onto Hampus and Nork, but it's Plopski's little Mac 10 maneuver getting close towards the connector that should have this one under wraps. And he does. He's getting tagged down by the USPs, but yeah, this one, all the danger's been dealt with. And it is the third round for Nip, but now the buy coming in for OG. Yeah, honestly, you love have double dinked by a double peak, but with Propsky holding W, he doesn't need to stop. He can just jump and shoot, and it's basically fully accurate. So, yeah, Propsky doing the damage, doing the work, and finding a third for NIP. Here's the buy, Harry Mantu. He saved a bit of money in the second. He's still not going to be able to buy armor, but he will have the AWP regardless, and that's what we want to see with him coming alive near the end of Inferno and helping OG pick up that win. Hampus is not waiting around, and he hasn't quite seen the leg of Alexi B, but if he gets closer, there could be a chance for him to strike. That sandwich smoke gives him a bit of mo a room to maneuver, but he's not rushing. And as his fades on the E-Box, Issa is up for grabs as well. Oh dear. Alexa B, what's he able to do? There's a bit of a lineup oh. for Alexa B, and he's in with three. Nork wrapping round, will deal with him. And now down into a clutch situation of his own. It's Nork back against the wall. He's dealt with the first man, and he's looking to navigate these murky waters as best he can. He'll get into Pop Dog up through the ladder. Doesn't know the whereabouts of Valda. That's the one question mark. We, of course, have the privilege of all the information in the world. So both these players down in Ivy. Now, before this clutch even begins, Nork is to begin this very uh, lengthy, very slow journey back to retrieve the bomb. That's not all bad news, though, because during this time, OG, you know, they start to get curious as well. They don't want to be navigating this one blind, so they try and piece together what's going on, and this is putting a little bit of doubt in their head. This has broken up these fights. Oh. MBK could have been a vulnerability, but he wins that fight regardless. It's two on the board for OG, and a lot of it coming off the back of Alexa B holding down Sandwich. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, MBK looking the wrong way just turns in time. He was low. A single bullet would have meant, you know, a one-on-one -on -one where the A site is open for the taking. Valor was pushed Ivy. But yeah, Alexi B, like you said, sets I love that. I love that player cam, man. You wouldn't know he just yeah. won the round. Like, he's, he literally hasn't changed facial just finished things. <laughs> like, uh, here we go. Orp with the orb. Love to see it, but he misses his chance. And so now players have gotten out through the connector. That's going to be Issa going aggressive into pop. Alexa B tries to pick up the pace and might come to regret that decision there as he's given over an early advantage to NIP. Yeah, I never want to call Alexa B a liability because so often things like that work and his aggressive plays can be really good. But at times, you know, you will see on these low economy rounds where, where he's running an SMG into a rifle round, he's going to try and make a play. And that can either make or break because right there, it's given NIP an untraded five on four. Not always the case, but now NIP, they're just going to push off the back of that kill. Twist dropping MBK Ivy side. Mantu needs to peek before these flashes come in, but he can't. He's been pushed off, and the blind shot gives away his spot. He's got another bomb dropped, and the AWP is already posted. He won't be able to get more than one. And Valdi is now one man alone in a sea of Swedes, stuck in the site. Nork is going to clean him out as well. And Harry, I mean, we've not seen Twist on the AWP today. We've only seen Nork and Hampus, but... Again, you're going to agree with me here, I'm sure. Nork has been a pleasure to watch on this AWP. No fear on the T side uh, with getting aggressive either, which can be such a difficult uh, difficult half to run the AWP on. But yeah, he was a standout player back on Inferno for NIP, even though they did lose. Yeah, Nork is like, uh, like calculatedly flashy. You know, like he's not going to take every peak he should because he's not he's not like one of these orpers who just throws caution to the wind that gets like the job done. But he, he's much more like methodical in it. And the moment he thinks he can catch a timing and, th and then explode on the back of it, it's like he's got a fuse. That's how I'd like explain it, right? Like he, he builds up in the round and then suddenly, boom, there he is. It's an orc with three, with two, whatever it ends up being. You can always count on him in those kind of situations. And, and really, you know, the, the moment Train was, was in the pool, I was already a little bit nervous for OG because this has been a good nip map. It's one as well that I think Nork, when we saw him start to pick that AWP up more, 
more and more, looked really, really comfortable on. And and then now you kind of like compound into that fact that, that Mantu had, you know, he gets the ace, which is great over on Inferno. But other than that, it was a pretty quiet performance. Yeah. I think you're going to struggle because Nork was not quiet at all. He was the top performer by a huge margin. And this is a map that can be dominated by a strong orping presence. So I'm a little bit worried. Unless we have Mantu showing up, I think Nork could just run rampant here on train. Yeah, not to run the, the orp point dry any more than we have, but like, you know, especially when you look at OG, that's not a team that frequents towards the double AWP on the CT side, which, you know, it's fine. Like whatever, it's, it's whatever you prefer. But yeah, that's certainly something that plays in the favor of NIP considering how this series has gone. Aggressive flash and nade into the main. Nork is going to have to back up, but perfectly placed. He'll get another couple, uh, another couple of kills assisted by Twist. Tom is still saved by NIP and Issa far from safe on this A site. The NIP, they're going to move away and this is all heard. Those upper halls and the footsteps towards B. Iss is looking to retrieve a gun off the body of Hampus and that he has found, but not really much else. This is the perfect chance to save. Yeah, we're not going to see any like High flying gameplay here in this 1v4, sadly. It's just going to be the AK hold for Issa. But you know, that still has some value because one of the problems you're going to have on a map like Train is that utility really really does make all the difference on this map. Like, you need a main Molotov early on to dissuade that AWP from peaking, to deny rushes. You need to have utility to hold on to Ivy later in the round. And, uh, and then over towards the B site, the same can be said, right? So so looking at this, you hold on to the AK. Well, the utility was going to be a little bit, yeah, like pretty good, but not all there for OG. Now that danger is mitigated thanks to Issa. He can purchase up a full belt. He can even drop a gun over to allow someone else who's maybe playing one of those key positions to get everything that they need. And that's going to be the decision that's made. He drops that gun over towards Valder. Valder now donning that full belt of utility and feeling real good about it. He can also get a kick which he probably should do. There we go. No. Mm, yeah, no. Leaving some things right. open. Let's hope that that doesn't. Yeah. I mean, Alexa B's got one, right? But I always get nervous. Out it is in see. How it is inner, right? And you're often going to see B retakes more often than A, so that could be somewhat of the thought process. But we'll see again if that has resounding consequence. Alexa B and Issa side by side, pushed up close. They don't know that Hampus has been really good in getting in this position, but he gets caught mid-air. Mantu still winning the fight somehow, some way, I don't know. And that is not how NIP wanted to start it off. OG had no clue that Hampus was so deep, but unfortunately there's little value found. Unfortunately for Valdit, oh, he has realized he hears the footsteps, twist is deep. Do they know about Rez as well? He's got to consider it. Rez can't trade. Valdit with a double in on the B site. No kit needed, no plant today. NIP stuck in a two on five. OG did fully rotate off of the A-bomb site though, and this has given like a bit of a window where like suddenly you're in this five on two, but you don't really have the control you would like to have over at A. They have everything else though. And so at this point in time, like the only place that NIP can be is already in this A site. So OG are aware of that. And that's why we see them very, very slow, just holding like already set up for the retake, even though that bomb isn't down yet. Nork with this all, Plopski. Looking for anything. And like, this is horrible for everyone in the server right now. They're all just hoping that they're not the first to die. And sadly for Nork, that is the case. Plopsky follows up, but now they know where he is. And there's the wrap from Valder. It's a third on the board for OG. And that is one thing I think though, that we can look forward to from OG in this series, like, or in this map rather. Even if somehow everything else falls flat, Valder is always a treat to watch at that inner bomb site. He was back on North, and now he is in OG as well. Whoa. That's hilarious. That's unreal. Uh, Hampus dies there, but yeah, you'll take it every day of the week. And yet you mentioned the OG rotate away from A. I love how safe they go in for the re-rotate. They, they assume the worst, right? And that's always the best thing to do. Assume that NIP are deeper than they are and just wait and uh, you know, hesitate and, and see if NIP make noise or make mistakes. OG just wait as long as they possibly can before re-entering A. And NIP don't want to plant because they don't know how close they could be. Rez down the pop dog, ahead of the smoke and into the face of Issa. That's an opening kill for NIP, untraded as well. 
No, oh, gee, they've just gambled. They've just stacked four players out on this A bomb site right now. It looks to be the right call as NIP shuffle away from B. They have plenty of utility to set up for an outer execute. MBK making a risk. He checks the corner, gives away his gun barrel. He can retreat here. Twist isn't chasing the frag, but the AWP is going to come in for support. Flashed out is Mantu. Twist peeks with a grenade in hand, and MBK will find a four on four. Yeah, Mantu looking to stand and deliver here as the main push comes on in. Valde holding down from the E-Box, only good for one. Mantu holding for the cross and Rez gets caught in it. Bomb now dropped. Rotation coming in from Alexa B into Pop Dog as well. That's going to cause some problems. The longer this round drags on and Mantu Woo! delivering with three. Four on the board for OG and Mantu hitting the ground running here on train. It's not a slow starter like Inferno. He is already here the moment that AWP is in play. Talking of AWPs, well, we're talking of Nork because he's got it back in his hands. So Mantu's going to have a challenge now. His work cut out for him. Wasn't too much of a difficulty in the previous down Olaf, but. NIP, maybe they'll take it towards inner this time. Two players going fast towards that side of the map. Mantu holding connector side. We got Valde pushing B upper. But that is being held. Oh dear, that looked like dead on, but Nork maybe over flicking in there. The flash doesn't affect him, but neither does the shot. And Valde lives to fight another day, at least knowing this AWP is outside of B. Mantu's going to be very much freed up on the A site to rotate. Smoke coming down on the ramp. And we can see using those new skyboxes, actually, Twist throws in a smoke from Ivy that lands into Connector. We see that thrown from pretty much every position on the map now. Oh, nice shot, Mantu waiting in the wings. The AWP posted up for the trade, though, and Plopski's even got the entry onto B. Valde gone with so much damage done, and the bomb getting planted uh -oh. to save will be denied. Yeah, they go running into Ivy with knives out. Like, guys, run, and the Twist is already there, waiting, foaming at the mouth. He knows that if that save comes in, this is the place Ooh. for it. Issa will at least get rid of him, and that's uh, a bit of compensation for losing out on MBK. Alexa B has just missed this timing. And Hampus now... Okay, you know, Issa's okay, holding a nice little angle. Like, this isn't going to surprise him, thankfully. But and Campus goes back, yeah. now he's dead meat, there we go, Alexa B gets it, cool, it's all kind of come together how you wanted it to. It's six on the board for NIP, and two weapons saved there for OG. It's nice to see the uh, the, the effect of that skybox change, right? Uh, if, if people remember, it's actually probably a couple of months back now, time flies, huh? Uh, where the IV skybox has been opened. So Twist actually threw that like deep con smoke on the B side from IV. That is usually thrown, well, initially it was thrown from upper B halls, then people started thro to throw it from Pop Dog on the stairs. I think Angel came up with that one and Hellraisers and, uh, you know, it landed or it flew through the Pop Dog windows into Connector. Well, now we've seen it from Ivy and OG, oh, they didn't catch on to that. They need to be aware of where that smoke's coming from. You can see it flying through the sky and they wouldn't have run into Ivy with their knives out, but that's something to learn for a later date. NIP going back towards early A control and Hampus, he's been so good at creeping and crawling out through these smokes. Yeah, and this time he's got, oh, I was going to say the rest of the team with him, but Alexa B catches the timing there. Oh, sprays close. the boost. Very, very close, but not close enough. Rez is also here in Olaf, just waiting for the repeak from Alexa B. That Molotov is going to force him to reposition. Might not matter, though, because he's has taken down another. And Alexa B with a ladder stool. Let's see. He's waiting, waiting patiently. Back into sandwich he goes. Issa in with another. Alexa B, yeah, there we go. They weren't ready for that. It's been Molotov. It's had everything thrown at it, and he's still there, still being a nuisance. And this just leaves Nork in a 1v5. Whoa, what a flick. All right, Nork. All right. You know, I wasn't believing when I first said it, but he gets that. 40 seconds. Realistically, like, still no chance in this one. But I would love to be proved wrong. I would love to be proved wrong. Oh, there it is. Mantu shutting it down, and man, you uh, NIP, I have sympathy for them there, right? Alexa B plays them like a fiddle. Seen in the sandwich, swaps out the gun, they molly it, he climbs up the ladder, Rez in, uh, in Olaf goes, well, he, he's not there, I didn't hear the molly burn him, so he's got to be on top of the train, he's looking, they even nade Alexa B down to 50 on top of blue, 
And then he just goes back down into that previously molly position. The last thing that NIP would expect, they assumed that he'd already crossed out. Very confusing round for them, I can imagine. And yeah, OG, they come back in with a fifth. It's been back and forth and back again. NIP's money broken. Two Galils, not a pretty picture by any means. Especially not when it's surrounded by pistols. And honestly, despite Hampus like getting this deep position, it was really good early in this T side at catching OG off guard, right? Slipping through sa Sandwich, getting uh, kills on E-boxes to smoke fades. But even though OG aren't actually seeing him get out of main, thanks to the utility, they're aware of the possibility. They're going, oh dear. <laughs> they're going, okay guys, always be ready for Hampus inside of a smoke in the A site. And since that point, they've just been shutting him down round after round. So nice to see OG already becoming aware of the tricks and tendencies of this T side. MBK, 18 bullets as they get out through IEV, but not for long. MBK knocking them out of the round. NIP, it's kind of all falling apart really in this one. Hampus all alone. And he's got the bomb at least, but like, you know, that's that's really all he's got going for him. Poor guy, 1v5. Can't plant here, man. It's gonna keep on creeping forward, not gonna get into B, but at this point in time, like OG, they're gonna stack in towards both of these sides with like a 3-2 split between A and B, knowing that really no matter what happens, they're not in too much danger. Ampus, what can he do? Maybe catches the timing onto Issa here. He just flicks back in that exact moment as he gets out through Pop Dog. It's six on the board for OG as they've started to right their wrongs. And now they're all tied up. But this was hilarious. He said checks it and then he gets flashed back in. And he's like, wait, where did he go? He's behind me. But you can see as he turns, he, he actually sees that player peek. Isis looked really good today, man. Like over on that CT side of Inferno, uh, moving to the balcony position, getting a lot of value uh, done there. Now finding some clean, quick kills with this retrieved AK. And 6-6 six, six, OG bounce back from the early lead of NIP. Full Glocks. Oof. Yikes. What can you do here if you're the ninjas? Yeah, I mean, I would hate to run into Valder with like full rifles at this B site. So like this is really uh, not not great. And then you got Mantu in connector. Oh my word, this, this should be ugly. This should be gross as they get ready to go in. No amount of getting ready is going to get you prepared for what lies on the other side, though. Valdep holding for the ramp push, waiting patiently. The smoke starts to fade, so now he drops the Molotov and he goes through the motions. Issa still in pop for a fast rotation. This round should pretty much be dead to rights. Like, I mean, it's only Glocks, but like the, the real objective here for NIP is a bomb plant, and I don't even know if they're going to get away with that. Ooh. Get the first man out. Valdep. Ooh, actually, a couple of missed shots, and that leads to him falling. So a bomb plant coming in for NIP. Should get mopped up by Issa on that pop flank, but even then, he's only good for one. They get all the kills shortly thereafter, but still, like, the Glocks get the plant, they get two kills. That's exactly what you were hoping for if you're NIP. Maybe it was off the back of Issa's flank that Valde moved away from that ramp position, but it didn't feel like it was communicated to Mantu. Both Valde and Mantu were watching up as the push came through, and yes, obviously a lot of players coming there. That's a, a good hold from Valde, but... NIP had the bomb on ramp and they get down for free and they get a bomb plant. Like you said, that never should have really happened considering OG were almost certainly aware what was going on. But yeah, maybe a, a lapse in communication and it costs, you know, nothing to OG, but it gives money to NIP and that facilitates the AWP in this round. It wouldn't have been there without it. But it's not the end of the world. It's still a full buy for NIP. They have six on this T side. They're looking to build. Nork holding up. Issa, that is dirty. Peeking into the holding Propsky. The grenade goes deep and they spam him off. That's a great play for Rez. He knows that Issa cannot back up into the grenade after the early damage done. And so the Wallbang, at minimal risk to him, finds the trade kill. NIP now a man up. Know that OG won't have more than one in this B bomb site. And they can go for the execute straight in uh, with four coming down the ramp. Now they're here with the orb. Uh oh. They're already out. They're already in the site. He's still looking at upper. Isn't exposed just yet, but Hampus down by oil, and he might have heard that little drop there from Valder. They're already very, very close. And 
Oh, there Ooh. we go. Valder's going to get it. It's a three on three. And maybe now on the back of getting that kill, it looked like they were poising to save. But now that they've got these even odds, they're a little bit more invested and they're looking to take another man away if they can. Half the time already ticked off this bomb, though. If you are going to go for this OG, they've got to go now. This Molly forces Twist up on top of the train, but he shuts down wow. two and now looking for the third while well, Valder does find it. It's not enough to turn this one around. It's seven on the board for NIP. And similar to Inferno, we are split right down the middle, heading into the end of the half. Yeah, I mean, last map was a game of T-sides as well. It feels like that's showing through again for NIP. I, I do wonder what OG have to show us on their T-side of this map. Knowing it's the Swedes pick, they're certainly looking prepared. And if they take the win at the end of the half, this is going to be set up very well for them. Twist looking good, man. He, you know, there was never a doubt about his rifling, but uh, it's such a flashy AWPA. Nork is filling his shoes very, very well, and Twist is not stepping down when it comes to those AK kills. Wallbangs won't connect. 5A early to allow for utility, and we're going to see Valde rotate right back into B. All oh, the timing, the catch, but Alexi B, he sponges the bullets. He bodyguards MBK, and MBK is going to get a kill deep through the smoke as Twist walks right through. That's actually so unfortunate. Alexa B is like, get down, Mr. President, leaps into the uh, leaps into the sandwich and saves his life. Man, that's uh, that's a pretty horrible way to have that, have that kill taken away from you. MBK, he's waited so patiently by this smoke and it's rewarded him once already. Surely not going to get rewarded again. And it will start to fade now. Plopsky waiting on the other side. This bomb is back towards B. But it looks like this is setting up for a fake, like trying to, trying to bait a rotation away from this A site. I do think though that in this five on three, like if I'm OG, I'm not, I'm not heavily over rotating on the back of this smoke. Like you've already got two players here. That's already more than enough. And so yeah, no one's budged, no one's moved. NIP, they're still walking into the more stacked site. The bomb now dropped and that there. It's a big problem over in Pop Dog. MBK does get bested at the very, very least. Plopsky out in Ivy and Issa looking for it. Also has to split his attention between Pop Dog and this. They're not the most ideal position for Issa, but he's made it work. Plopsky down, Nork in with the response. 1v3 and Valdev flanking and should be at dead to rights. OG, 8-7 right now. Yep, the uh, national knockout between Big and Sprout is in the second map. Sprout did pick up the first, and Big are leading 14-12 on the second. That's on ESL on score CSGO B, if you want to watch the Germans take each other on. But right now, and right here, is NIP OG in map number two. OG in the lead, showing us a great CT side, but Popsky is going to find first blood here in the A site. Those USPs from a range tapping down. Dangerous stuff. Twist with a double before he's finally silenced. And Valde, a clutch that he just can't continue. NIP, they're going to level up the score 8-8 eight to eight on their map pick here in the series, and they need to show us why. Yeah, we had OG win the pistol in the first half in, in really just as a convincing fashion. And then we had that force buy back in from NIP and we saw the start of those force buy wars. I'm wondering if we're going to see the same thing from OG. It doesn't look like it. They might just take the eco here. And now with a focus on the investment in this follow-up round. Now that does mean that Mantu is going to be lacking that AWP moving into the first buy round, but it gets those AKs out just that little bit earlier. Down into pop. Taser in hand, Alexa B, ready to dish out some justice. No one comes his way. Ooh, oh, there yeah. he is, he gets it. Taser kill for Alexa B, the first Zeus and the first best of three as well. And already, already I love OG. <laughs> NIP might not agree with that statement, but uh, oh. it's not the end of the world. <laughs> Oh dear, there's the smoke down on B. We're gonna see a quick execute here for the Glocks. Nothing really behind them. Hampus getting dinked up by the one P250. There could be a chance. Popsky's mowing them down, but a bomb planted. Hampus getting wrapped back. He's already low. A gun gifted over, but already the players unable to pick it up. They've lost their life. MBK pushed close, unaware, and he's on the triple burst as well. That's never gonna work. Not at that range. Defuse coming through, but that's a good round for OG, man. Two kills off the back of the Zeus and P250 combo. And NIP, well, Defuse comes through. OG are going to be armed well for their first rifle round. Mantu, if he wants it and no utility, he can buy up the AWP. So let's see if he opts for that as well. I love this. This is great. 
The more Zeus is the merrier. Yeah, especially because like there are, as we just saw there, there's some really good like routes that you can run where, where if you get there and the timing's good and you hit all the timings you need, the Zeus can be pretty effective. You know, I've seen you wielding it to good effect over on Overpass, Hugo, with short play. Nades going down in towards this B site early and Hampus' aggression gets taken. Ah. Oh, oh, goodness, Valde slipped down the ladder. It wasn't meant to happen like that. I, I think he was showing his legs. It's, it's, it's pretty common to show your legs and dive back up, but not only did he have his Glock out, meaning like, you know, even if you're RNG shooting on the ladder, you're not going to get a kill, but also he had full util, man. They could have mollied that out. They could have cleared it with flashes. So a bit of a surprise to see OG neglect to clear, uh, clear the pop dog perfectly. Then IP, they'll take it. Hand, uh, hand wrapped and gifted to them, and a man advantage in the opening rifle round. Oh, and Nork with his AWP ready to go. One man has gotten out. The flash is good. That's going to force the AWP out of action, but Twist is going to try and go through this smoke. Oh, he's got back to back oh. with Mantu. This is a bit of a disaster. Mantu's now lost in the smoke as well. They're trading places. It's Freaky Friday, but Mantu gets the kill. Does just about get away with his life. Alexa B's in the B site in the meantime. And look at this, right? This little sneaky play, right? We have to be very, very quiet because Alexa B, if we're too loud, they might hear us and then they might hear him. Alexa B could do a hell of a lot on this flank. At least one kill guaranteed. And there it is. Nork now down. And suddenly this A hold gets thrown into disarray. Mantu, is he going to be ready for Hampus close? This kill could make all the difference in the outcome of this round. And he doesn't check it. Hampus gets given that one for free. Alexa B stopped between a rock and a hard place. And it's Hampus putting up the double NIP they reach double digits as they go 10 8 up yeah clean CT side so far three in a row and no more money for OG either they would have loved a bomb plant on that MTB bomb site but the package not in the right place Norksop does a, a lot as well down on Ivy that's kind of what we hoped and needed from him in this series that's such unlucky timing that, that Twist gets through the smoke as well because Mantu walks right through the other side and MBK, thinking his back is covered by his teammate, just gets shot in the back of the head. Nothing for him to do. Triple nade on the site. No one jumping up for the cross. That's a common route for CTs to get towards Sandwich. But OG's nades get nothing done. And that's a bit of a shame for them. Only Deagle's left behind this twist. Oh, it's a messy spray. Very little accomplished, but he will get information. He'll spot two players and be able to back up. Now the rotates inner. Two CTs here to deal with it. Rez has pop for a late drop. Valdi ducking potential wall bangs. No G, despite showing early B presence, are going to group up back towards that A site. And funnily enough, Hampus is still holding ramp. So he has all this information. Not that Twist is going to be rotating just yet because there's nothing to imply that OG are back towards A. But as soon as someone gets spotted, we can have that double rotate or push immediately come through. Yeah, Issa. I'm gonna like to try and get in through main. Now, he does have quite the uh, man to get past in the form of Plopsky. And that smoke actually gives them a passageway out and it allows them to bypass this double pop hold. Now, I thought maybe that was gonna do them more favors than it has. Plopsky and Twist have delivered and Plopsky still putting up these numbers. Leaves it onto Alexa B, try as he might. This is a nigh on impossible round four and 20 seconds left. Plopsky tagging him down, going to finish it off with four, and it's NIP knocking on the door of an 11th round. Yeah, this is a really clean CT side right now, and it's, it's kind of the worry we had for OG coming into a map like this. NIP have done their homework. Their setups look good. No stone is unturned. It's not like OG are able to catch any, you know, open positions. That one time they have, they got Alexi B into B, but it was a, it was a four on two. And, you know, he only took one kill off of that flank. There was only one available. So, NIP, leading by example, 11 to 8. AWP out for both sides, single. Alexa B is going to have to smoke that Molotov. Only gives away his position, and they can spam him if they want. Molotov for Popsky, he gets aggressive. Oh, he's hiding in Olaf. He can wait for the fade. And if he hears his flash, he can even push through or spam as well. He doesn't want to. Fighting his time for as long as he can. Alexa B is spamming, but not in the right corner. Popsky popping out with one. There's Mantu caught as well. And that is excellent work for Popsky. He's going to get caught. MB 
Johnny K's patient as ever, and he's on a three-piece right now. He needs the fourth, he needs the clutch, as Nork has dropped the Ivy Lurk, and MBK is going to go back for the bomb and use his years of experience to outbrain the opposition. Oh, but Nork, he's been doing his homework. He's uh, coming on this rotation over towards B. Ah, just as I say that, now holding for the aggression from MBK. This is at least going to leave him nearby. And MBK might not have as much time here as he would hope. Oh, no. Getting this bomb down. Nork. Oh, oh. oh, there we go. There we go. Back in towards B. USP, still the weapon of choice here. That's a... Uh, Curious one, MBK, while he is tagged, you know, you're gonna need the headshot to make this choice worth it. Nork making a lot of noise and he spotted that that bomb is planted out in the open. Clearing the bomb site, Molotov onto upper, but not ready oh. for MBK, hidden on the bomb train. It's nine on the board for OG and four in the round for MBK. Big clutch from him. And yeah, I think someone must have made the call that like, okay, he's low, last low. You know, MBK, he, he won three kills before that one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, you've got to make the assumption that, okay, someone's shot him, someone's tagged him, but you never know how much damage, right? And, and you hit the nail on the head, Harry. Like, even if even if he finds that position, even if he gets a one-on-one -on -one versus MBK without his back turned, if he doesn't hit an immediate dink, that was a lost round. So, nice try from Nork, but yeah, he, he even made the wrong call on, on the site initially staying in the connector, gambling between both. And it's gonna be OG finding their first on the T side. Better late than never. And IP's money isn't exactly pretty either, right? These rounds have come close. They've come down to the clutches and that's gonna cost you in the CT side. We've got that double AWP out. Uh, one of them being a scout, Nork on it. Hampus has his AWP. Twist is just in a series, not touching those orbs. So this is looking less like a map change and more like a permanent fixture, but we'll see more and more as NIP continue to play throughout this tournament. Popsky pushed pop side. We've got OG walking into B. And look at the minimap. There's one dude here, and it's the one man without a weapon. Twist on a pistol has so much to do and nothing to do it with. This early rotation from Nork is necessary. Yeah, and even then, if they don't deliver kills like into it, really into like a three on three or a four on four, this round should be over. There's Nork with the scout looking for a bit more. No one's looking at Ooh. him. No one's looking over at Nork. They're giving him so much freedom, and oh, he's still alive. Still a problem, Nork. Trying to deal with Valder, who's getting aggressive. Missed shot. Valder closing the distance. Now we're going to slow it right down. Alexa B does delete Hampus. We're into this three on three, though. That's what NIP needed. Valder strips it away from them. There's the trade. The bomb still on upper. This is a bit of a problem now. Issa flashed, but a miss spray from Plopski. Nade going to find a lot of damage. They lose Nork, and now it all falls onto Plopski up on top of the train. Ooh. First man down, and oh, Alexa B tagged. Plopski lands the jump. Missed shot from Alexa oh. B, but it's a whip city down inside of the oh. full site. Alexa B gets it, and it's 10 on the board for OG. They just, and I mean just, <laughs> win that round. Oh, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't, lo it wasn't lovely to watch, but they do get it and they reach double digits. They bring the economy of NIP to its knees and it's another four spy from the NIP squad. Glock versus USP and that's the lack of head armor coming back to bite NIP there, right? When you know you're against AKs, that's one thing, but nothing worse than losing to something like that. Alexa B, great job. Well, that was a messy round of the best of times. NIP, I like it. They know that it came down to a one-on-one, -on -one, even though the OG aren't broke just yet. They have nothing left in their bank. So NIP will force right back in. If they win this round, OG are on an eco, or at least a force of their own. And so I actually really like this call. Nork showed us a lot of promise with that scout out on B. It's a very dangerous decision from the Swedes that could cost them in the long run, but... As much as there is a risk, there is the reward of winning the round. And on a map like Train, look at what NIP are doing there. They're using these pistols to great you know, advantage. They smoked off main, they've taken close positions, they've denied crucial map control for OG. And you know, this almost forces OG either to retake main with those two pistols or just to head inner where NIP can try and you know, use that scout to their advantage once again. It's currently sat on the site watching Ivy. This is looking to retake main position as the bomb goes towards B. That little bit of attention from Issa, that, that one Molotov and the spray in main, 
maybe he's just bailed OG out of some danger here, right? It's forced a, a man around from B and IP. They've just gamble stacked inside of the <laughs> site. Rez naded, oh. spammed, molotov He's not having a good time down in Pop Dog. It's not a very welcoming uh, sight to see. Speaking of welcoming sights, this B1, the carpet's rolled out, the bomb can go down, and OG are ready to call it home. Yeah, honestly, NIP save, and uh, they agree. They're just going to go right for it. As long as they can keep five alive, they can just do this again in the next round and start to build up that money for the later buy. It will mean that OG are realistically probably going to start leading uh, after this one as NIP's force finds nothing in this round. Rez gets caught in the pop dog. I would have loved to see him fast flanked, right? Because what OG did there is they threw that Molotov on the pop exit, which means you know either he has to stay in pop or run through the molly and take decent damage. He stays in pop, they double nade it, but it doesn't kill him, it just puts him low. And so by OG's guessing, they go, well, pop's clear. The nades would have you know, killed anyone in there. We spammed as well. We mollied the exit. We heard no damage. And so they immediately turn around and discount that position. There's a world where Rez can sneak up that ladder and have a really, really uh, fast B flank. But not in this world. And honestly, the save is, is worth it anyway, right? That didn't look like a winnable round, especially with no kit and a B bomb site plant. OG, 11-11. It may have been a strong CT start on this map for NIP, but three in a row from the T's, and the AWP is back out from Antu again. Let's see if this saved force can find a little bit more for NIP. Yeah, the only downside to it going down in that fashion, right? Like, yeah, you get the pistols again, but any damage that you find is like inherently a little less valuable. Like even if you win this round, there's still an investment for OG yeah. as a result of keeping five players alive in the one prior. So let's see what they're able to accomplish with this. They get into main once again. Mantu's holding down Ivy. Ampus has gone aggressive outside of B. All across the map, it's the, the same kind of idea of NIP stripping away these very key areas. The only one, the only liability that they've left open is Pop Dog. And they're now having to keep an eye on that from this main aggression. Ivy, there's a bit of a window where they can get out. And Twist has now Ooh. moved in to try and plug Hello. that. Plopski Deegan down another in the meantime. And this has gotten dangerous. Mantu's had to trade the AWP out for the AK to make these entries happen. Valdet. Oh, oh no. dear. Oh no. Oh goodness. <laughs> it's a flawless round for NIP. And you know, like I'm saying, well, you know, that's still a buy for OG, but that's a huge round for Nip to, to pick up, especially because they were buying here anyway. Now they get away with AKs. They take stuff out of that round. They get an injection of money with $2,000 already in the bank account. Suddenly, Nip went from like, you know, being in a bit of a rough spot with like back-to-back -back four spies to now having so much cash, all the weapons they need, all the utility they need, and they're on the verge of breaking OG. That round there could be the one that secures Nip this map. Yeah, I mean, think back to how they went five outer in, in the round that OG hit B and, and, and NIP just saved, right? That is exactly why NIP were playing five outer. They were wanting OG to walk into that setup. And, you know, OG, they don't want to go B twice in a row. They don't want to be predictable. But if anything, NIP, well, they predict it regardless. And huge benefit, huge win in terms of the money, as you say. All out for Nork. And OG, this is their economy on the line. This could be the map on the line as NIP will find 13 if they win this and break the money down to zero. Smoke down Ivy. There's three T's here. The Molly's going to push Twist back. He can't compete. He can't fight. Still two in for NIP, and they're already starting to consider that re-rotation. Nork is running across the trains to get back into A, but it might be too little too late. Plopski getting tagged up from main side. Here's that Ivy take. The deep smoke is going to isolate Twist in the corner, and he needs results. He can't find it. MBK with the opening kill. He is low, but Nork can't find anything through the smoke either. NIP are already starting to peel out of the bomb site. The AWP swapping into connector will drop the bomb. Hampus climbs up, gets knocked down a peg, and Nork trades the AWP right back. This is so uncomfortable. Clear. This is so back and forth, and this is a great call for NIP. Absolutely disengaging, falling off of the site and playing retake together as OG get the plant in on A. Especially with Rez just getting that kill in pop like moments ago, right now, suddenly he is in connector along with Nork. 
MBK very, very low on health, trying to keep a, a, an eye on this position single-handedly. Valde just playing for that defuse, playing for main. Now the bomb isn't in like the, the, the best spot for a main after plant. He's gonna have to run quite a distance to get into this one. And with them tapping the defuse, oh, MBK oh, has the information. Wow. Oh no, MBK, there's one, does get traded by Rez. He tries to get on the bomb, but Valde arrives in time. It's 12 on the board for OG. And MBK, the mastermind, just sat there playing with his food, waiting patiently, yeah. letting as much time tick off of that defuse as possible. So even if he does fall, like even if, you know, I mean, exactly what happened. He gets that one kill and then dies, but they had to get on that bomb. They had to get on the defuse and that just frees Valde up to win the round. Yeah, that's so great. And the whole time NIP are just standing there like, why aren't they peeking? Why aren't they checking? Well, they've already got the info. Uh, and a big round from OG to keep this one competitive. Man, this whole series has been back and forth, Harry. Overtime in the first, and we are neck and neck in the second. I hope we get a three-map series out of this one, but that would mean NIP need to start picking up this round right here, right now, and it's a fast out of take. MBK with the entry. Popsky's going to trade, but he's getting wrapped on the top of the blue. Issa dropping in. Oh, no, it's a mess, and the org is going to find success. MBK trading into Con. Twist will get their responsive kill. Actually, a team flash onto Nork. Valdi flicking back and dealing with a pop flank as well from Inner. There's a chance here for Valdi. We know what he can do in these clutches. Yeah, one to his name already. He needs the three piece to pick this one up. And up on top of the green train, he goes. Plopski down here at the back of it. And oh, we saw him. <laughs> Swings on out. And it's Plopski with three of his own to put a 13th on the board for NIP. They just about keep this lead in their favor. But the uh, it kind of has like a rippling effect. Like just outside of keeping the lead, you've wrecked the economy of OG. And now at this point, NIP, they are poised to take train. OG are in a very, very rough spot. Like, do you take the force here and now? Do you wait? Do you give up 14 before you have an investment back in? And even then, it's going to be lacking in some ways, right? You, you're only going to be getting a little bit of money. So for players like Issa, that's a real problem. He's only got 1,500 to his name. That's going to leave him with very little to work with moving into that. And IP, they'll take whatever they can get. And right now, leading by one with that force in for OG, putting all their eggs in one basket. NIP, the scramblers themselves. One man on inner, it's Hampus with the SMG, taking the hit. And OG, they want to hit this B site early. Already five players going through the hall, sneaking in as well. They don't want those pop players to hear anything. Ducking below the potential wall bangs. These shots to go through, only to imply that they're setting up smokes towards A. That's not the case, and Hampus has already cleared out one inside of the halls. Not going to rotate, watching up, but means Hampus is freed up to deal with the ramp and he's got so much utility for that position as well. OG, they're not waiting. They're not playing around. They're committing fast. Oh, they get out upper, but that leaves them in the prying eyes of Nork. Oh, unfortunate unscope. They get into the site and now that bomb plant can't be found at the very, very least. But here comes Plopski, the heavy hitter. The big man is on the scene. And he might not even be needed. Twist in with another, make that two. And there's Plopski with the final. It's going to be 14 now for NIP. They break apart that B play. They lose one man in the process, but it was only the MP9 that falls. It's, it's really not the end of the world, whereas it might be the end of the run here for OG, at least on train. Bomb plant gives them a bit more money, but not enough to invest. At the best, they're looking at pistols here. NIP, they were the ones to make the risky force earlier, and even though it forced a save and eventually led success with five alive on that eco on A, well, OG, they do the same. They go for the risky force, and it costs them, like you said, maybe even the map here. They're going to go back in with a buy against 14, not wanting to play 4 OT on their opponent's map pick. I don't blame them. Fast out A with the SMGs, trying to flood the site is Alexia B. He's got that smoke down on the sandwich. Hampers was... Annoying, a nuisance in this position. Alexi B looking to be the same. There's been a lot of comparisons between these two IGLs in this matchup so far, but the pistols are not getting anything done. SMGs try at the, at the site. At Valde MBK with one apiece, but Nork is still in the connector and he's holding for this wrap down old bomb. Hits the shot, not the kill. They get closer and he misses. Oh dear, Valde's out on ammo. Down to the Glock, he gets the kill. B's been opened up. Twist is on a rotation. He's going to hear all of this at right place, right time, right Right shot. It's 15 for NIP on their map pick, looking to take us to Mirage. 
that's heartbreaking. It gets so close, like especially considering how the start was, was just falling apart for OG. They do a great job of getting that into a two on two in the first place. But as you say, twist, right place, right time, 15 for NIP. And looking to make this a three mapper, just one away from getting us there. And as has been the case in all three of these final rounds, if that's what this ends up being, there's no money for OG. They forced and they forced, and now they've got a force Uber. There's nothing to imply that they're going to win this round with how those previous two rounds have gone. Plenty of utility. That is it. Two running B. Alexi B going to get a Molotov in deep to deny an upper aggressive player, but NIP only have one on that B-bomb site. There will be Nork rotating with the Orpies, but very mobile on this CT side, dealing with those upper B plays every single time, but it's not a B take. It's OG going for the fake and dropping back down pop. Alexi B, I love it. His teammate's Molotov, he drops into it and takes less damage than if it was his own or an enemy's, and he gets at least a bit of foothold inside of this site, a trade in the favor of OG. No guns to be retrieved, though, and Twist is sitting at the back. Nork supporting with the orb. OG just running through smokes, and it might not be the solution to this site hold. NIP 